This tutorial is for Andrea Mowry's The Shift. I'm using periwinkle sheep yarn and US size 5 24 inch needles. The pattern's available on Ravelry, and this tutorial demonstrates the various stitches used in the pattern. It's a super fun knit that uses slip stitches to work in color speckles and to add a great texture to the fabric. It's symmetrical, worked flat, and then seamed together at the end. Here it is modeled by the gorgeous Lauren and her foster dog, Mara. In addition to being fun and easy to knit, it's also super easy to wear and adds polish and color to your outfit. Like a lot of triangular shawls, this one starts with a little tab. The setup is the most tedious part of the shawl, but it quickly expands and becomes a very repetitive, fun knit. Here's some perspective on where this beginning tab ends up in the finished cow. The tab expands out into a triangle and becomes the back of the neck where it's seamed together with the other side. You can see the triangle starts out very small, then expands out to the right with make one right increases along the right side, and then make one left stitches are used to increase along the left edges of the triangle. The pattern also uses slip stitches at the end of the right side rows to make a really nice finished squishy edge. Part of what makes the beginning a bit fiddly and tedious is the small amount of fabric as you're starting. Also in the beginning, you're doing mostly the edge techniques and edge increases. When you get a bit more into the pattern, you have a sturdier fabric to work with and are spending more time in the middle with the more repetitive, easily predictable stitches. So be patient with the beginning. It'll be more fun very quickly, I promise. It all starts with four stitches and then expands from here. I'm going to demonstrate some of the increased techniques with this bulky yarn. Here is the knit front back front stitch, which is used at the beginning of the pattern and adds two stitches where there was just one. You simply knit into the front as usual, but don't take the stitch off, flip around to the back and knit into the back of the stitch, then come back to the front and knit into the front again. Now you have knit into one stitch three times, adding two stitches to your row. You can see here, instead of our original four stitches, we have six stitches split between the two needles. Now with the working yarn, simply knit front, flip around, knit into the back, and knit into the front again. Now you've increased by two. To make this nice rounded finished edge, the pattern uses slip three with yarn in front. This is just what it sounds like. Bring the yarn to the front and slip the last three stitches. Bring the yarn to the front, slip the last three stitches. Another edge technique used is slip one with yarn in back. This is also super easy. Just slip the first stitch as if to purl and follow the pattern from there. Slip the first stitch with the yarn in back and just continue according to the pattern's instructions. The pattern uses make one rights to increase the right side of the triangle. To do this, you pick up the bar between the two stitches where you want the increase Put it on your left hand needle from back to front and then knit into the front side of the stitch. Now you've made a stitch where there wasn't one, increasing by one. Pick up the bar between the two stitches Put it on your left hand needle from back to front and knit into the front of the stitch. Now for a make one left, you pick up the bar, not from back to front, but from front to back. And then instead of knitting into the front of the stitch, we're going to knit into the back of the stitch. 
Now we've made one left. Pick up the bar, put it on your left hand needle, not from back to front, but from front to back. And then knit, not into the front of the stitch, but into the back of the stitch. Increasing by one. Even after doing this many times, it can be difficult to remember which way to put the bar onto your needle and whether to knit into the front or the back of the stitch. I often jot it down on my pattern or make a little cheat sheet like this. It's also helpful to jot down the color coding of your yarn so you don't get confused and start working with the wrong color. Another tip at this point is to mark the front side of your work with a locking marker. This will help you not get confused as to whether you're on the right side or the wrong side of your work. It's just one more reminder as you're following the pattern, a safety net. Now we're ready to join a new color and start our color work. This is easier than you might think. You simply pick up your new color and start knitting with it according to the pattern's instructions. So here we're doing our edge technique of our increase on our right side of our work. We're finishing up our make one right here. And now I'm ready to start the slip stitch part of the pattern that brings in the color work speckles. Slip one, knit one. Slip one with the yarn in back and knit one. On the front side of your work, you're always going to be doing the slip ones with the yarn in back. So here we are, we start with our slip stitch Pick up our new color, do our edge technique, and we're ready to start the color work. Slip one with yarn in back, knit one. Slip one with yarn in back, knit one. When you slip with the yarn in back, the float is on the back side or the wrong side. Now here, we're gonna do our edge technique. Here's our make one left, pick up from front to back and knit into the back of the stitch and bring our yarn to the front and slip the last three stitches to make our nice finished edge. Now we're on the wrong side and we're ready to do our color work here. On the wrong side, you bring your yarn to the front to do your slip stitches. And this will make the float go across your work, showing on the back side or the wrong side. So you knit, bring your yarn to the front, slip a stitch, and then knit. You're always going to be knitting the same color you're working with and then slipping the opposite color with the yarn in front on the back or the wrong side. Here I am back on the right side of the work with our original color yarn. On the right side of the work with the base color of the yarn, we're just simply going to do our edge technique and then knit across the row. We're just making a solid row to offset the speckles that we had just made. By knitting down this side here we're at the end doing the increase techniques. So I make one left, put it on from front to back and knit into the back of the stitch. And now we're at the edge technique of the bring yarn to the front and slip the last three stitches. Now we're going to flip over to the back, going back down the back side with our original color. We do our edge technique and then we just purl down the row. This provides a knit up and a purl back of our solid colors to offset the speckles that we'd made. And that's the tab. Now I'm just gonna give you a little perspective on how this all comes together in the cow.
It's helpful to think of the sections as a base color and a slip stitch speckle color. Here, the base color is natural and the speckle color is the blue. You can see some of the speckles are larger. These are slip two, knit twos, and some of the speckles are smaller. These are slip one, knit ones. Here, the base color is the purple and the slip stitch color is the natural. And base color purple, slip stitch color blue, base color purple, slip stitch color natural. Here is the wrong side of the cow. On the wrong side, the yarn is in front for all of the slip stitches. This causes the float to be in front of the stitch, as you can see here, making for a definite wrong side. So here I am on the right side of the work doing the base color, which after doing the end treatment is mostly just knitting down the row. Then you flip to the wrong side, do the end treatment as the pattern calls for, and then just purl down the row. Here we are on the right side of the work doing the double slip stitches to create the speckles. So here we slip two and then knit two. We slip two with the yarn in back because we're on the right side of the work and then we knit two. Notice that when you slip two, you can tell that you're doing that above where there was a speckle. And then you knit two above where there wasn't a speckle. This is so your speckles alternate, giving the nice alternating pattern. Knit two with the yarn in back so the float doesn't show on the right side. And then you'll do your slip two. Here we are now on the wrong side of the work where we're doing our slip two with the yarn in front, creating that float. Knit two, and then bring your yarn to the front for the slip two, so the float goes across the back of your work, the wrong side that we're on now. The knit two is in the same color that you're working with, and the slip two is in the opposite color. So knit two, and then slip two. Here you can see the nice pattern that creates and you can see what it does on the back with the floats. The pattern ends with an I-cord bind off. As you can see, this makes a really nice edge and it shows up on the front of your cow. It's a simple process. You just start by knitting two and then you knit two together through the back loop. Then you put these three stitches that you just made back on your left hand needle and you're going to do it all over again. Now you do it with the alternating color. I'll be using the purple this time. You knit two, knit two together through the back loop and switch your yarn and put those three stitches back on your left hand needle. Now with the alternating color of the blue, knit two, knit two together through the back loop, and switch my yarn, make sure it's tight, and put those three stitches back on the left hand needle. Now we'll knit with the purple, knit two, knit two together through the back loop, and switch the yarn, put those three stitches back on your left hand needle to start all over again. You do this all the way down to the end, and when you get to the end, you cast the last two stitches off over the first and pull the yarn through. So you can see this makes a really nice edge to your cow. And now you're ready to block the cow and weave in your ends before you seam up the edges. You seam up the cow with the mattress stitch. Lay the cow out 
aligning the two sides you're going to seam together, making sure they fit nicely. I use stitch markers to help them stay together and keep me on track as I work my way up the sides. Next, thread your tail through your needle, then dip into the edge on the other side from the back. You want to dip in just on the right side of the edge row. Now go back to the original side and split the edge row apart a bit. You can see between the last two columns is a ladder of bars. You're going to dip in from the top and scoop up two of these ladders. Then back to the other side to do the same. Dip in the same place your yarn is coming out. Scoop up two ladders. And back to the other side. Scoop up two ladders. And over to the other side. It can be a little tricky to find the exact spot the yarn was coming out and to keep those columns of stitches from curling. This is part of why blocking is really important right here so that your columns don't curl in and you can see the last edge row. Dip in, pick up two bars, and over to the other side. Dip in, pick up two bars, and over to the other side. When you have about an inch and a half, you're going to zip it up. Pull on the yarn so that the sides come together. Nice. And then continue on. You can see the back side of the work here. Keep doing this. Pulling it together about every inch and a half. Try to keep the tension even as you do this. You don't want the material to pucker too much as you're pulling it together. And you don't want it to be too loose so it looks sloppy. Just try to keep nice even tension. If you pull too hard or try to pull too much of it together by going too far before you zip it up, you really can break your yarn. And that will prevent you from getting even tension throughout your seam. So just back and forth all the way up, making sure that you're going to be on track so that the two ends will be together. Here we are at the top, back and forth for the last few. And now we're just going to secure that tail at the very end, just pulling together the two sides. And I'm going to bury the tail in the seam. Just go back and forth here several times, making sure that your tail is securely in that seam and won't be coming out to unravel your shawl, your cowl. Clip the yarn and there you have it. Your two sides are seamed together. And you have a cowl. You can see it's a nice seam on the front and on the back. The seam is nice and tidy. And that's The Shift by Andrea Mowry. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like it and follow me on YouTube for more knitting tutorials.